What the hell was that? What was that? What the, what the hell was that for a football match? That, without a shadow of a doubt, was one of the most bizarre football matches and the most eventful football matches I think I've ever watched for a long time. When was the last time you saw a 4 4? I'll tell you when. 10 years ago, when we played Liverpool in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, when we edged them at Stamford Bridge after that 3 1 win. Remember that? Remember when Liverpool gave us a real game at the bridge and it ended 4 4? <laughs> I'm speechless. I don't even remember the last time we had a, we saw a game like that. We came back from 4 1 down to potentially even winning the game. What, what was that? Okay. There's going to be a lot of things to talk about in this. There's, there's really going to be a hell of a lot. Uh, VAR. What can I say? VAR. I mean, look, okay, we can hate VAR all we want, but to be honest with you, and I hate to be some kind of guy that just brings the bearer of news that nobody wants to hear, but I have to be honest. Before Azpilicueta struck the ball, the ball did hit his hand, and I've got to be, I've got to hold my hands up and say that. Yes, I did actually, when the ball went in the net for possibly 5-4 and everyone was just like jumping around because we've somehow miraculously made this comeback. And then, well, when we saw it in the replay, when it went to VAR, the ball did touch his hand and fair play. You know, we all hate VAR and we, yeah, I do hate VAR because VAR has done us twice in two games. But yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's just talk about the first half because the first half was shambolic in every single frame of the word i don't even have any there is absolutely nothing in that first half that warranted anything positive or good or anything that was abysmal okay first of all the first two minutes of the game we immediately conceded a free kick from outside of the the penalty box ix just swung the ball in and it came off of abraham's foot and it went in, like, how many more times are we going to concede a set piece in any game? 30 seconds after this, we, we got a penalty, because uh, we went straight up the other end and forced a penalty on them. Jorginho, call as you like, converted the penalty, one apiece. But then even straight after this, like, our defending was shambolic. I couldn't even begin to tell you the number of set pieces we were conceding from over there on one side and then the other side. That doesn't even matter. We were still conceding set pieces. And then Ajax made it 2-1 with, I've got to say, one of the absolute pinpoint crosses that you're ever going to see. Azpilicueta doesn't even know where the man is. He's going straight be from straight behind him. He ghosts in, meets up with the ball, and he just heads it straight in past Kepa for 2-1. And then, what? <laughs> like, that was just schoolboy error errors in defending. Like, defending was absolutely terrible and then the third goal that Ajax scored again some absolutely shoddy defending everything was all on Marcus Alonso let me get on Marcus Alonso a little bit later on because there's so much to talk about and then we go away and concede another set piece from outside the penalty box and then Ziek, I think his name's Ziek. yeah everyone's talking about Ziek and how good he is free kick Almost like date like the way that David Seaman would have dealt with a free kick. Rem remember when Ronaldinho in 2002 when he scored that free kick for Brazil against England when it went straight over his head. The same principles applied here, but the same. But what happened was the ball came over. It hit the post, came off of Kepa's head, and then went straight into the corner for three one. Okay, I can't be honest. I think Kepa was a little bit unlucky there. I think maybe on a better day he would have possibly just jumped in and and handled it which is what he should have done but instead the ball just ricocheted off the post and off his head and then went straight into the corner I, I don't know like could he have done better there I don't know but at 3-1 you're just thinking oh my god like the heads would have probably gone down by this point but it brings me now to Marcus Alonso because Marcus Alonso was abysmal like how many more times are we going to say how poor Marcus Alonso was on the pitch the most fraudulent football player there has ever been at Chelsea. I, I, I 
sit there and I watch Marcus Alonso and I just get so frustrated with everything he does, whether it's like bringing somebody down, whether it's trying to tackle somebody, whether he tries to cross a ball. Did you see that cross? Or was it a cross? I don't know what it was, but it was something. It didn't even resemble a cross. It just tried to cross it and it just went over there. That's where the goal is, Alonso. The goal is not over there. The goal is over there. You're supposed to try and put the ball in the net. Not try and put the ball out for a throw-in. You absolute idiot. Like, what is Marcus Alonso? What does he even do on the pitch? You know, when we talk about players being allowed to play on the pitch by merit, Marcus Alonso offers absolutely no merit whatsoever. So he should never play on a football pitch for Chelsea Football Club ever again. There's one thing we need to do. If, if the transfer ban is lifted in January, there's one thing we should do. Offload Marcus Alonso on a free transfer and bring in somebody who is 10 times better at left back than he is. That's all I'm going to say about Marcus Alonso. Marcus Alonso, absolutely abysmal. He should never play football for Chelsea ever again. That's it. That is it. Case closed. That should be it. I don't want anybody in the comment section below backing Marcus Alonso because he doesn't deserve it. He does not deserve to be playing for Chelsea. Full stop. Emerson should be playing at left back because Emerson plays on merit. Did you see him playing against Watford the other day? He did a blind and He wasn't even fit. We're playing Marcus Alonso week in, week out and he does jack shite. That's all I'm going to say. Second half though was completely different. Completely different because even at 3-1 down we were actually looking like we were going to take chances and we and we I don't know we, we did did you see Kurt Zuma by the way running through like an absolute battering ram it's unfortunate that he can't finish but did you see him just run through the Ajax players like a battering ram looking like he's about to score a goal like I said unfortunately he can't finish because he's a defender <laughs> but could you imagine if he actually went through and actually scored from that. That would have been ridiculous. But then, I don't know, like, Ajax, you know how good Ajax are on the counter-attack? They did get a fourth goal and everyone was like, game over. Game over th at that point. But this was when it all started. This is when it all kicked off. I, d I don't know how we managed to, to do this, but suddenly we make it 4-2 with, I don't even remember who crossed the ball. I think it was Willian who crossed the ball in and then I think Abraham kind of met to it on, on his foot and then Azpilicueta in the far post finishes it, makes it 4-2. And then this is where it all kicked off, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it all kicked off because then, then Ajax got two players sent off from, I think it was bringing down Mason Mount later on. I, th I wasn't sure who, who got brought down. Was it, was it Mason Mount? I don't remember. I think Mason Mount did, he was on the deck. He did act, no, no, he got substituted off because he got injured, didn't he? I don't know the severity of Mason Mount's injury, but yeah, he came off and then Hudson O'Doy came on. I think it was Hudson O'Doy that got brought down or maybe, maybe it was somebody else. I can't remember. But Ajax got two players sent off just like that. They were down to nine men. And then in the blink of an eye, we got a penalty. And then when Jorginho converted that penalty, the second penalty scored on the night, suddenly we were back in it. Suddenly, Ajax were on the ropes. I don't know how they were able to defend for the next, I don't know, 20 minutes. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Reese James. I completely forgot, by the way. Reese James, at half time, was brought on. Thankfully, Marcus Alonso got taken off. Hopefully, that will be the last time he ever comes on the pitch for Chelsea ever again. Reese James was brought on at half time by Frank Lampard. Great change. Great change. And then Azpilicueta got played at left back for the remainder of the game. Reese James. Got the equaliser. It was a, it was like pinball. Willian took the corner kick. It was just like pinball in the penalty box. And then Reese James just arrowing the ball in the far corner. How the hell did we finish that 4-4? Do you know, it, it should have been 5-4. But had it not have been for VAR and it realising that Azpilicueta handled the ball before he kicked it in the back of the net, it should have been 5-4 to Chelsea. But no, no. Because of the accuracy, because of how accurate VAR seems to be, yes, we all hate it. It pinpointed the fact that Azpilicueta handled the ball before he kicked it. But had it not been for the fact that VAR noticed that, it should have been 5-4.
But even then, when when Batshuayi came on the pitch for for Kovacic later on, even he could have been on the pitch and he he could have had chances to put the ball away. But remember that that when I think it was when he he uh, he received the ball in the penalty box, he turned around, tried to finish it, but goalkeeper saved it. Oh my days. There, there are so many things about that game that just was so bizarre and something I've never seen in a football game before. Like, we're never going to see a game like this ever again, are we? Like, <laughs> how did that end up 4-4? At 4-1, apparently, there were Chelsea fans that even left the stand. They were, at 4-1 behind, there were a bunch of Chelsea fans that even left the, the stadium. You idiots! You absolute idiots! It's never over till it's over, okay? We've just proved that today. It just goes to show you that you should never leave a football game. Whatever the circumstances, whether you're 4-1 down, whether you're 5-1 down, you don't leave. A bunch of, a bunch of Chelsea fans left at 4-1. <laughs> and then apparently, according to the commentators, when it, when it was 4-4, they were literally running back to the Chelsea State. They were literally running back to find out where their seats were, just to watch the remainder of the game. Absolute idiots! You just don't leave! It's never over till it's over! Honestly, what was that game? From start to finish, the first half was abysmal. Second half, what was that? Honestly, guys, we've, that was a classic. That was a classic. Unfortunately, it was a draw. We, we both got one point each. Valencia beat Lille as well. So, where it leaves us now, us, Ajax and Valencia, all on seven points each. So the last two games are going to be interesting because we have to go to the Mestaya in the next game, hoping we might get a win there. I don't know. Valencia still look a little bit shaky in terms of their form. But if we can get a result there, we have won plenty of games in Spain before. And we've even beaten Valencia at the Mestaya at some point in a Champions League match. If we do get a result there, great. If we don't, we may have to rely on Ajax to beat Valencia in Amsterdam and hope that we beat Lille. I don't know, it's all up in the air. It's all up in the air. Us, Valencia and Ajax are all on seven points each. Lille, Lille have got one point. They're, they're completely out of it. But all of us are on seven points. So one of us has got to go into the Europa League, right? It's going to be one of Ajax, Valencia or us. I hope it's not us. Because after seeing today, it just proves that Lampard, even at 4-1 down, we st with this team has still got the mentality to get back and come back and get a result. Okay, yes, we we could be leaving. We, sh we should be leaving with a, with a win. If it hadn't been for uh, Azpilicueta's strike and VAR running it as, as, a, as a handball. Obviously, we should be going away. But the thing is... God, I've lost, my, I've lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys. Like, honestly, what was that game? What was that game? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But that was ridiculous. That was absolutely ridiculous from start to finish. First half was terrible. Second half, we completely picked up. Ajax got two men sent off. And then... Well, we somehow got three goals back. How we did it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was kind of some kind of lifeline. I, I don't know. I, look, <laughs> can you can you see how I'm feeling right now? I've just watched a game, one of the most bizarre games of football I've ever watched. Honestly, you're gonna have to give me a little bit of leeway here. I mean, it's difficult to even do this review as it is. I mean, cut me some slack, all right? <laughs> anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think in that in the comment section down below. But that was. Oh god, I need to sit down. I need to lie down somewhere. God, do I do I feel blessed that this was a this was a point gained after all of that? Do I feel disappointed that we're not going away with, away with three points? Should I feel devastated that we've conceded four goals? I don't know what to think, but there's one thing I will say: Marcus Alonso, you are shite. Don't ever ever turn up in a Chelsea shirt at left back ever again. I I, I really hope that in January. The, the transfer ban is lifted and you get sent out on a free transfer and we sign another left back that's 10 times better than you. And I'll tell you something, you will not be missed. You will not be missed within the slightest. Absolute fraudulent footballer. I'm sick and tired of looking at him at left back. He's absolutely useless. There's one thing he's good at. There's one thing he's good at. Giving away free kicks. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this absolute dramatic video review. If it's all over the place, I'm sorry. If I've forgotten about reviewing players, I'm sorry about that too. You're just going to have to cut me some slack because I don't know what else to say. I honestly feel like I need to go ahead and lie down somewhere and just think about what I've just watched for the last 90 minutes. So l let me have my time now. And then when we come back again against Crystal Palace at Stamford Bridge, hopefully we won't get something as dramatic as this. And hopefully we might actually get 
a much better game. We might actually get a clean sheet. We might actually get a win. Which would be nice. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Until the next one. I shall see you later. Hey, door. And peace.